you're unsure, just tell them you're unsure. So that's intuition. It's not really a technique, is it? But it's something that we do, yeah? Now, using a formula, I uh, talked about this a little bit yesterday when, we, when I was talking about return on investment, ROI. That very often people use a formula because it's too complicated for them to estimate properly. You remember this, 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 this uh, problem that I said that people tend to substitute a different question okay, to solve a diff difficult problem. So, you have a difficult problem, it's, it's, it's really difficult to calculate something, so you substitute something and you bring that in, ah, I can do that, and what you can do is take development, development cost divided by 25% and that's my estimate, I can do that. So I substitute that as my technique instead of a proper, instead of a proper estimate. And using a, a formula, there are many formula out there, but this is a common one. Testing effort is X percent, 25 percent of total development effort. Dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> okay. But if you have to do a spontaneous estimate, let's imagine you're in this meeting and somebody asks you, how much do you need? Your question is, what's the total development budget? Throw the ball back to them. And if they say, oh, well, I've got no idea, your next answer, your next reply is, how do you expect us to estimate that? Yeah, it's a little tactic. Yeah. And if they say, um, two million, then you can say in your worldly way, oh, well, our rule of thumb, 25%, half a million will do it. Is that right? Yeah, half a million will do it. But that's really dangerous. Okay, but it's better than saying, I have no idea. If you say, I have no idea, do you know what happens? Somebody else does the estimate for you and tells you. And that's usually not what you want to hear. Okay. So it's better than nothing. Okay. But it's dangerous. Be careful of people. Consultants are bad for this kind of thing. <coughs> industry baselines. According to industry baselines, is 25% hogwash. You cannot say what the industry baseline is because there is no single industry baseline for estimating the testing in a project. Of course, it depends on the project, doesn't it? And the risks and the things to do and, you know, each project is, I wouldn't say different, but there are some variations. So, it's okay for a quick ballpark figure, okay? Now, sometimes it's useful, for example, in, in Agile, if you, if, are you familiar with Agile a little bit, the way it works? It works in, in so-called sprints, and you estimate mostly for the whole project, and then you estimate also for each sprint, maybe two or three weeks. Is that right? Two or three weeks for you. Now, when you do that, um, when you are on sprint five, you already have four sprints behind you. At that stage, you can actually start to look at this kind of basic formula for your estimating. It could be that you say, okay, well, each sprint we have, the, we have let's say, a hundred so-called user story points, something that you need to implement, functions, a hundred. And we know that the testing for sprint number 
1 to 4 took about between 26 and 27 percent of the total project budget and it's constant we can see that that is how much time we need you can use a formula then after that because you have confidence that the other that the other sprints will have about the same kind of relationship 25 percent 26 percent that's when you can do it, because it's based upon reliable information. The problem with these things is, the 25% is usually picked out from somewhere you don't know. Somebody says, oh, industry baseline. Or somebody says, yeah, experience. No. Usually, that's just a guess. It's something they heard, maybe, or they... They heard it in a read it in a magazine or something like that. It's, it's usually you know, there's no, usually no basis. But if it's based upon your own experience, especially with agile projects, that's one of the benefits of agile. There are lots of things that can go wrong in agile. Maybe we will talk about that. But this is one of the good things. You can generate your own experience, generate your own metrics for estimating makes your life easy okay so that's um, formulae what do you do always check the validity of the number you are using for your project I have worked on projects where the number 25% was 250% Okay. in safety critical projects, <coughs> working on um, embedded systems in aircraft. Uh, if that's the case, you want to be sure the software works because if the software doesn't work, the aircraft crashes. Oh, okay, that's safety critical. Uh, so the development costs are, let's call it 100 million. The testing costs were 200. That's what can happen. If you're working on the development of a, a website, an app, needs to be quick onto the market, not much testing, just some functional testing maybe, that 25% might be 5%. Just some quick usability, yeah, it looks okay, <coughs> out the door. So. You know, the, the range of this number can be really big. So be careful about people telling you it's always 25%. It's not true. Always ask them, where did that 25% come from? For what kind of project? And is that the same as my project? So, yeah, do, really do that. Um, and validate point to somewhere, I don't you have to keep on validate for your project that this 25% here is this, this 25% is a valid number. If it's not, probably your estimate is way, way off. It could be too high, it could be too low, but it's off. So, but sometimes you have to do this, okay? <clears throat> Life isn't so, so easy on us. Sometimes we have to do this. So, what do you do if you must take this kind of formula, verify afterwards that it's real? So, in real life, in your project, oh, is it looking like 25%? Or is it looking like more or less? That's the, the good thing with Agile, that you can build that into your project. With other projects, mm, that's going to be more difficult. But you can at least check and say, oh, we, we use 25%, it's looking like 35%. Ooh, uh, something went wrong with our estimate, how can we correct? And document your assumptions. Remember, you, you, you need to make your estimate believable. 
here we have it. Believable. People need to believe your estimate. You make that estimate believable by explaining also how you made the estimate and what assumptions. So document your assumptions. Say, well, we think it's a million. We use this rule here. Uh, we're assuming that... Okay. So it's like a list of things that you are assuming. The person that is understanding your estimate then says, okay, I understand you've assumed this, you've assumed that, good. Maybe when you do that, they will tell you, ah, oh, no, you can't assume that. And you can change your estimate. So, document assumptions. <coughs> Watch out with this thing of trying to be clever by being very, very accurate. Because if you take 25% of, of some number, you will come up with possibly a strange looking thing. If you have 750,000 as your development, you take 25% of it. I can't work that out in my head. But it will come out to a sort of a, you know, a long number. Don't do that, right? Just round it up or down, yeah? Don't try and be clever. So I guess many of you know the classical work breakdown structure. Um, in, the, in the history lessons in European or in, in probably English uh, schools, we learn all about the Roman Empire. Heard about the Roman Empire? How they came and conquered uh, Europe and you know brought all kinds of interesting things, straight roads and goodness knows what else. Well, one of the things that the the uh, Romans were good at was a, a technique called divide and conquer. Maybe you've heard that. Split everything up instead of taking one big problem and trying to estimate that one big problem, break it down into little pieces and eventually you come to the little piece where you say I can estimate that little piece. Divide and conquer in estimating. Break things down. That's the principle of work breakdown structure. It's like a tree, you know? And your structure is like a tree. And eventually you come to the leaves. And you count up the leaves. In Europe where we live, we'd wait until autumn. All the leaves would fall onto the floor. You'd gather them all up and count them. I guess here, you don't, the trees don't lose their leaves. You've got to count them somehow on the tree. But it's like the same principle. It's the, it's the, each leaf makes up the tree, which is the thing, what you're trying to estimate, your, your tree is your project. And it's the same project, the same concept. Break.